Aphids are a very widely distributed group of plant-sucking insects. Almost all crop plants are colonized by one or several species of aphids. Aphids extract sap from their hosts and excrete honeydew. In addition to the direct damage done by sucking, there is another danger. During the process of sucking, aphids frequently transmit viruses and in this way spread numerous plant diseases. Aphids are virus vectors. The most important vector of plant viruses in the world is the green peach aphid, Mysis persici. In early spring, peach trees begin to sprout in the orchards. Protected between the bud scales, the eggs of a green peach aphid have survived the winter. Now life is stirring in the egg. An aphid is starting to hatch. It's the fundatrix, the stem mother of all future generations of Mises persici. The fundatrix moves to the peach buds bursting into bloom. There it feeds on the sap of the young leaves. Soon, the blossoms also will provide nourishment. Within a few weeks, the stem mother becomes capable of reproduction. It gives birth to about a dozen nymphs. Still a little inexperienced at first, they grow quickly. The adult females bear further offspring. In addition to the wingless individuals, every generation also produces nymphs with wing buds. These nymphs develop into winged aphids. As the weather gets warmer, the winged aphids leave their woody winter hosts. Carried by air currents, they often travel great distances, always seeking certain herbaceous plants that will be suitable as summer hosts. With brief feeding probes, the aphid tests if a plant can be considered a host. If these feeding probes are unsuccessful, the aphid soon flies off again. Potato plants are suitable summer hosts for the green peach aphid. Aphids that land on this host reproduce rapidly. The population grows. Some plants in the potato field exhibit dark brown spots on the undersides of their leaves. These plants have been damaged following infection with potato virus Y that has entered them from infected seed tubers. When winged individuals of the green peach aphid land on the virus infected potato plants, they start with feeding probes. In doing so, they also, with their stylets, inevitably take up potato virus Y particles from the plant's epidermal cells. The virus particles become attached to the epicuticular lining of the food canal. The aphid has turned into a virus vector. Afterward, if the aphid lands on a healthy potato plant and punctures it during a feeding probe, it transmits the viruses, probably through its saliva. This viral transmission has to take place within a few hours because the virus particles cannot persist for very long on the stylets. For this reason, this type of virus transmission is termed non-persistent. From the puncture site, potato virus Y spreads into the neighboring cells. Eventually, the cell damage caused by potato virus Y can lead to the death of the infected plant. The winged aphids spread the viral disease within the entire crop. Besides potatoes, Mises persici colonizes numerous other plants. Crop plants, 
as well as weeds. These host plants often contain other viruses, for example, the beet mild yellowing virus. If, on the basis of feeding probes, the aphid has recognized the plant as a suitable host, it typically moves to the underside of the leaf in order to start prolonged feeding. During feeding, the aphid stylet bundle reaches the sieve tubes in which the beet mild yellowing virus is transported in the infected plants. The virus particles are passed through the aphid's food canal along with the sap taken up while sucking upside down into the esophagus, the stomach, and the gut. The virus particles cross the lining of the midgut and in this way enter the aphid's body fluid, its hemolymph. The virus particles circulate in the body cavity without multiplying. On their way, they also reach the principal salivary glands and the neighboring accessory salivary glands through which they enter. These viriliferous aphids transmit the beet mild yellowing virus from plant to plant along with salivary secretions. The aphid often remains a virus vector for life. For this reason, this type of virus transmission is termed persistent. Nymphs that molt also continue to be infectious, like this nymph after its first molt. Beet plants on which winged forms of the vector aphid species land become viriliferous during prolonged feeding. Beets are highly susceptible to infection by beet mild yellowing virus. Leaves of infected plants turn yellow and frequently die. This generally results in severe yield losses. Characteristic yellow stunted patches in winter cereal fields are also the result of a virus disease, barley yellow dwarf. In fact, this virus disease is caused by at least eight different virus species. One of these species, MAV, is transmitted primarily by the cereal aphid Citobion avini in a persistent manner. Some features of the specific relationship between Citobion avini and the virus species MAV are known. Together with ingested sap, MAV particles are passed through the aphid's hindgut, where they encounter the extremely invaginated surface of the epithelial cells. The receptors specifically binding the MAV particles are located here. The MAV particles enter the epithelial cell by endocytosis and are then transported through the cell in vesicles. The vesicles fuse with the opposite cell membrane and the particles are ultimately released into the hemocele. Eventually, they encounter the accessory salivary glands. The basal lamina of these glands is not an obstacle to the MAV particles. However, the actual cell membrane can only be overcome with the help of MAV-specific receptors. Now, tubular vesicles transport the virus particles through the gland cell toward the salivary canal. Here, small vesicles with individual virus particles are budded from the tubular vesicles. The vesicles then fuse with the plasma membrane, thus releasing the virus particles into the salivary canal. When an MAV-carrying aphid starts prolonged feeding on a healthy plant, the virus is transmitted along with accessory gland secretions that are injected into the plant via the salivary canal within the stylets. The aphid stylet penetrates the leaf tissue deeply in order to obtain food. In this way, the virus particles reach the transport system of the sieve tubes. Here they multiply and spread throughout the plant. The plants turn yellow and are stunted, hence the name yellow dwarf. Later infections result only in a pale yellow discoloration of the leaves. 
yellow dwarf viruses infect not only barley, but also wheat and other cereal crops. After harvest, volunteer plants act as new hosts for the cereal aphid. Corn also is suitable as an alternate host, as are numerous other grasses. As soon as the first fall-sown grain seeds have emerged, winged aphids colonize the young plants and multiply. Thus, early sowing favors aphid reproduction. The offspring of these aphids can spread locally during a mild autumn. The consequences of this infestation in fall are seen in spring in nest-like colonies. In these colonies of infestation, there are aphids that have survived living on their host plants, especially following mild winters. These aphids awaken in early spring to new activity, as sucking parasites and as virus vectors.